Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five on Broadway.com. It's Thursday, July 19th, and I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Eric King. And we are here with the one, the only, Caitlin <laughs> Moynihan. Hello. <laughs> one of our favorite people is here in the studio with us today, Eric. Yep, we've got Mike Wartella. He's Woo-hoo. promoting his 54 Below show. It's Heck TV yeah. time in a minute, because first, <laughs> that was we're going to do the top five. Surprise, a Tony winner is about to make his directorial debut for another movie musical situation. It's a lot. It's a lot to handle. That was a good intro. Sorry. That's right. (laughs) Thank you for that. It's Lynn manuel I made the joke earlier today. I said, Lynn manuel Miranda is going from click boom to tick boom. Tick, tick. Uh, Right? Okay, so he's Very high concept introductions today. (laughs) Tell us what's happening. Movie musical of Tick, Tick, Boom. This is Jonathan Larson's cult favorite musical from 2001. Mm -hmm. Um, Stephen Levinson, the Tony-winning book writer of Dear Evan Hansen, is going to be writing the screenplay for this, and his sister Julie. Julie Levinson is executive producing. Um, So we saw, obviously, Off-Broadway in 2001, and then there was a 2014 Encores production in which Lynn actually starred... That's um, right. It's a three-person musical, yeah. and Lin-Manuel Miranda was in it mm-hmm. at Encores at City Center. Love yeah. it. And so we don't have any casting yet. We don't have a release date, obviously. I mean, Lin is a movie guy now. He's going to be getting... <laughs> He's, gonna be in he's Mary still Poppins. a musical theater guy, though. Come on. He's going to yeah. be in another movie musical, Mary Poppins, coming up. So we're really excited about that. Um, and Tick, Tick, Boom is about all the anxiety of turning 30. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. That's so young, though. Is it? It is. Okay. It's young. All right. <laughs> Well, you guys, you have one more week to catch this awesome off-Broadway play. It is awesome. It's Mary Page Marlowe at Second Stage Theater. I saw it last night, ladies and gentlemen. How was it? It was very good. Highly recommended. Um, So this is written by Tony and Pulitzer winner Tracy Letts. It's directed by Lila Neugebauer. And it stars a lot of fancy people like Tatiana Maslany and Blair Brown and Grace Gummer because Meryl Streep was in the audience last night. (gasps) That's her daughter, Grace Gummer. Um, Really great show, great cast, and they've got one more week. It was originally supposed to close on August 12th, and now it will close on August 19th. So catch it. And they all play different characters, but they play the same characters, but they're all different actresses. That's correct. It's all about Mary Page Marlowe. Five different, I think five or six actresses play her at different points in her life. So Definitely Tatiana worth Maslany went from playing Orphan Black, <laughs> all these different orphans, one actress, and now there's a bunch of different actors playing mm. one part. If well, you want to tie it together fun. with a ribbon, you just go <laughs> ahead. You just do that. I there's love that. Ribbon. And we got some fetch news today. I had to. That's right. Um, to. So, Beth. Oh, okay. Mean Girls. <laughs> the cast album. You've already memorized it. Now you can get it on vinyl, but not just any vinyl. Pink. Pink vinyl because that's what we were on Wednesdays. Uh, this will, <laughs> this is coming out, it's a limited edition pink vinyl. This is really retro, but very new and in. Uh, it's officially out on August 24th on Atlantic Records. You can pre-order today, wherever you pre-order your records. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever, wherever you do that. So, there you go. Love it. And, oh, I f- you know what I did? You messed, I you messed, messed it up. up. Yeah. I but messed nobody it up. knows I'm so about sorry. us. But now everyone uh, knows. Oh, okay. sorry. My bad. You out of okay. I, yeah. It's um, the end of the week, people. <laughs> it's fine. Sorry. <laughs> the band is hitting the stage for the first time tonight. It's a big deal. It's That's a big right. deal. We're getting the band back to the visit with the bandstand and oh, the boys. Oh, gosh. And they're all You're together. Confusing no. people. Getting all the, the band bands. back together as previews begin tonight. Um, it's official opening night is going to be August 13th. It's got a score by Mark Allen and a book by Ken Davenport, directed by John Rando and choreographed by Chris Bailey. And uh, who's in the cast, Beth? Mitchell Jarvis. Mm-hmm. He's playing a person named Mitch, as he does so well. <laughs> That's good. Mary Lou Henner. Lots of cool people. This is a band. Mm-hmm. Kelly Barrett. All these people are in a band. They broke up. They, they hit school. middle age. It's like a high school band. Right. And guess what they do? They get back together. together. Yeah, it takes place in New Jersey. You're going to like this one. It's an original musical. New Jersey. What's not to like? New Jersey. Love it. And not from that band, but we do have a boy from a band in the band. He came to visit us. I promise not to hit my forehead on the mic. But okay. You just you just go ahead and <laughs> you know what I mean. Things. Yes. It's Matt Bomer. He was on Show People. Woo-hoo! Yay! Oh, so nice. So He's nice. So, so talented great. and so handsome. And you won't believe some of the things we learn about him. Like, did you guys know he was in one of the original uh, workshops of Spring Awakening? And Great Gardens. And Great wow. Gardens. No clue. So, 
Paul always calls him the, the, the mu musical theater star who almost was. And, you know, now <laughs> maybe he can be. He talks a little bit about maybe doing a musical, maybe yes. doing more shows on Broadway. He talks about directing American uh, Crime Story Versace. Talks about his uh, Broadway debut, which is Boys in the Band. Check it out, guys. Check it out. But first, before you check that out, Mm -hmm. Caitlin, will yes. you tell us about our guest today? Oh, and Eric, thank you for your service. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Of course. Guys, we have Mike Wartella in the studio with us today. Um, he has an upcoming 54 Below show happening on July 24th. You're going to hear all about it, learn how to get your tickets, so you better be there. You probably know him from his time in Charlie and Chocolate Factory or in a Tuck Everlasting or in Wicked. You know, he, he's been in a lot of stuff. Um, be sure to follow him on social media at at Mike Wartella at both Instagram and Twitter. He has a lot of cool stuff there. And leave all your questions in the comments below for us. Everyone, please welcome Mike and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Hi, Mike. I'm here. Hi. You're here, and He's I'm so here. happy. This I is one of the nicest things. people of all time, everyone. Oh, of course, you. you know Mike from yeah. being our vlogger yes. when he was in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, he was Mike that. TV. That's right. We did TV time. TV also, time. Which I believe was a title that was suggested on Twitter by a fan before we See, even did it. See, your vote counts, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> but since then, you've been, yeah. you've been doing some music. Tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, I've always been into music and writing my own stuff and performing covers and all that stuff. And so I had a little free time, like you do when you're unemployed. Like you do when you're at um, Liberty, yeah. <laughs> and, and used it wisely, and I've been sort of working more. There's actually an album coming up this fall that I'm working on. And Tell me more. Oh, I know. He right? has such a great voice, you guys. Oh, thanks. Go on YouTube or wherever. Go to Mike's site and listen. Because yeah, there's no of all, videos there's on no YouTube. No videos. No, none. Zero. Way too many. First of all, you play the guitar and you play the piano. A little bit, yeah. I actually what play the drums, play? too. And the what? I just haven't done that. Mm. Well, I do, th I do that in a, in a show I've been so working on So when did you lot, start taking music lessons or teaching yourself, or how did this come about? My parents were uh, musicians, are musicians. My stepdad and my mom uh, had a band, actually, in the Berkshires, called David Grover and the Big Bear Band. I, I don't love know it out in the woods up there. <laughs> Where like in the Berkshires kids, are we talking? All up and down. I think Just up and down based, the Housatonic. Yeah, basically. pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> they were based um, in West Stockbridge, South County, but all over the place. They actually toured nationally, nationally and they were a kids' folk group was what they were. Oh, so it was aimed for kids. Aim, aimed for kids, hence the title, yeah. But, wow, um, okay. They were great, and so I think that's really how I started doing it. I, I never... I, I never went to, like, choir or, like, any of those things mm -hmm. in the beginning. I was just singing as a kid in the studio, harmonies, folk harmonies and stuff with my stepdad and my mom. Um, and that's still yeah. kind of your sweet spot. You do a yeah. lot of different kinds of music, but yeah. you have a, a folk heart, don't it's, you? I kind of do. <laughs> I, it, I'm bringing it out more. It's funny because it was not how I started my career. It wasn't something I was known for. And I sort of decided to do that, like, make your own way, pave your own path thing where – I kept getting cast as kids and specifically sort of sweet, innocent kids with like easy, sweet with voices. Tattoos. Well, kids with tattoos. Kids with tattoos. I didn't have the tattoos back then, but now I have many more. Um, but I just, I wanted to sing more rock and roll and I wanted mm -hmm. to do folk rock stuff. So I started kind of doing concerts and putting videos on YouTube of all the time. And now that's what I do. Sometimes. So let's talk about your 54 Below show. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. What kind of music are we going to listen to when we go? Everything. I mean, Everything. obviously the focus is going to be folk rock, rock and roll. Um, there's definitely going to be two or three of the songs for the album, like original songs. These are original compositions original by songs Mike Wartella. By Mike Wartella. I love that. Very sort of, you know, trendy rock and roll. A little bit of like old school 60s rock in there and stuff. But wow. those will premiere at the show. Um, and then I like to do, I think, you know, you guys know this, I've done this here, but my, my fun thing to do is I like to take musical theater songs and sort of reimagine them. and yeah. Like your series, like the Unplugged thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, you can go on Broadway.com and listen to Mike sing mm -hmm. and play. There's going to be a couple of those. There's going to be one from Tuck Everlasting that I've redone. So a couple show fun. tunes you're going to sneak in there? Yeah, yeah. In that way. I don't think you'll hear like a single like, Strip down. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> there won't be any of those. No jazz hands except for no right here, right hands, now. Just right That's there, it. yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, a lot of that. And um, some covers, just some straight covers. I'm a cover guy. I like, you know, people in the beginning, they were like, if you're going to do original music, you can't do covers. And if you do covers, you got to, like, really reimagine Perhaps them. You can do what you want. Do what you want. <laughs> and I do all that. But I love, like, if a song is good, you just sing it. Well, we all Let's know your Sarah Bareilles cover. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that's what we put up on the site just recently. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I was like, why <laughs> are that? You're all <laughs> watching it and crying <laughs> really when you were singing She Used to Be Mine because it's a real different twist when a guy sings it. Yeah, that was what I was thinking, actually. It was sort of, I was just doing it because it's such a beautiful song. I mean, she yeah. writes amazing music. And I was just at home on the guitar doing it. And I was like, what if a guy sung this? And what was it like? And so it, works. It. it works. Guess what? Sure. Spoiler, it works. <laughs> 
So, yeah. also, you have your son here with you today. He's not in the room. No. Because but he is this like is in boring the building, for him. Actually. Yeah, he's in, the, he's in the building. Oh, I asked him. I was like, do you want to come in and watch Dad? And before I could finish the sentence, he was like, no. <laughs> he's got an his honest, Nintendo Switch. He's an honest he's child. Gone. He's yes, an honest he is. child. Is he musical as well? Yes and no. He can <laughs> sing beautifully. He's got an amazing voice. His mom's a singer, too. Yes. And uh, so he's got a, a great voice. And he has that sort of thing that all the kids have now that I didn't have, which is like pop sensibility. Mm. So everything is scooped and like yeah. riffed, you know. <laughs> and I didn't have that growing up. You're like, up, where's your vibrato? Yeah, there's no, no, it's all straight tone. Um, he loves Hamilton. He does all the Hamilton stuff. Of course, of you course. Know. But he, he won't do it live. He won't do it in public. He doesn't like to do it if I'm like, oh, do that again. Let me hear you. He's like, nope, oh. none of that. We have kids that are yeah. the same age, we 10. We do. This is the age where you can't tell them what to do. No. And it's, you know what? It's kind of great. I don't know if you've experienced this yet, but last year into this year when that phase started, I got kind of upset and I was like, how am I going to control him? Like, how am I going to, you know? And all of a sudden I went, he's capable. He's like yeah, strong and smart, knows what he's doing. I'm just going to let him make some decisions. And if they're bad, he will figure it out real quick. <laughs> right. You know I mean? A little independence, not too much. Just exactly. a little bit. Just, just enough for safety. Just but, enough to say, know. I don't want to be in the studio with you, Daddy. Pretty much. But it's <laughs> funny. It drives my mother insane because she's like, well, you can't let him do that. And I'm like, watch him. Go. Let him watch him do it. I'll figure it out. The consequences, they come. Yeah. yeah. They do. They do. Life All right, we, I know Love we have that. questions, so I'm going to take oh. your questions, guys. You okay. do have questions. I like this one a lot. It says, you know, well, this is me just prefacing because, you know, Charlie and Chocolate Factory was a book. Tuck Everlasting was a book. Is there a book, another book that you would love to see be turned into a musical that you could star in? Wicked was a book. I'm Wicked just was pointing a book. Oh, Wicked was Almost a book. But not like I've a children's plays, book, Pepper though. Was a book. Like, I've done things. Susical was based on a book. A lot of books. That's yeah. true. Yeah. It's, it's true. true. I mean, there's, I've always had research material. Mm -hmm. I've never gotten that question before. Um, nothing jumps off the top of my head, partly because... I hate to admit this. I'm not a huge reader fan. I wasn't a great reader Mike, in school. I know. You can listen to them on That's Audible. Audible. That's what everyone tells me. That's what everyone tells me. If you're that kind of person, oh it just needs God. to hear it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, I might have to think about that. I don't know. That's what would smart. be good? I mean, I, I'll say this. It's already been done, but I really think it would be great to do it you know, on a bigger level. A Prayer for Owen Meany is a John oh, Irving wow. novel. Mm. Simon Birch, the movie, was based mm -hmm. on that. I did that play. I played, played Owen in Denver at the Denver Center. It's a three-act play. It's like epic and Do you have to gorgeous. have a strange voice? Doesn't Owen have to have a strange voice? I actually read that book, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I don't remember, but it was very like... Like it definitely was like talking like this. Yeah. Like, it was something <laughs> really weird. There you go. Like there that. you go. Similar. <laughs> Which is kind of how I've done my whole career. I didn't know you were going to go into it. Well, I, all of a sudden I was like, value added to Let's this do it. interview. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that love would be a good one. Ooh, that was Caitlin's question. Now let's take no, that. Oh, no, no, I, I she promise it. it's here. I she promise it's here. Um, okay, so what was it like working with the young Charlies in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Three there were three, Awful. right? Three of them, Such right? Such little three. jerks. <laughs> we're live. We know they're watching. Uh, what? They're, they're <laughs> no, all they're named amazing. Ryan or Jake. No, I mean, or that's Ryan. like, you know, and I think you'd probably feel the same way, but that's especially fun when you're a parent mm -hmm. because you just have that soft spot, you know, and they were so good, all of them, and they were so sweet. And you different know, from each other, which is interesting. Uh, totally, totally different. And there was a different show every time. And, you know, they would start to, as they got comfy in the role, they would start to, like, improv with you under their breath, and which is probably <laughs> not the most professional thing to do. But <laughs> they were picking it up from the adult actors, and it was really cute and really fun. To, I loved it. I loved it. That's so cute. Yeah. I love that. Um, okay. When you are working on your 54 Below show, how mm. do you choose like, and pick what songs you're going to do? Yeah, yeah, tell us your artist, process. Uh, you just sort of like whatever <laughs> speaks to you. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> actually, that's really true. I mean, I think, <laughs> I think my first thing, you know, when they ask me to do it is I go, how much time do I have and how, right. how much new stuff can I do? Do I yeah. have to pull out old stuff and just get it ready to go or can I really get creative? And luckily this time I had a lot of time to do mostly new stuff. So this mm -hmm. will all be stuff like, you haven't seen if you were at the other 54 Below shows or you haven't maybe seen online. Some of it will mm -hmm. be repeats, but... And you, you have know. some special guests. I do. I have a couple special guests. So you get to banter a little. Including the Skivvies, which I'm really excited so about. So the Skivvies, yeah. are, that's Lauren Molina and Nick Searley, and you're Correct. going to... Um, are you going to strip down? I mean, I skivvies. will leave it undetermined. <laughs> I guess it depends on the temperature <laughs> that day. Because I'm actually not really like. sure. Yeah, we don't know. Um, and then, uh, you know, a couple friends of mine are doing it. Um, this one friend of mine, Andrea Laxton, and her husband, Ben Laxton, are amazing. And they're going to do a little mashup. And I've worked with her for years. But she just has, like, a stunning voice. She's worked a lot, but she also hasn't, like, broken into, like, everyone knows her name moment. And so mm -hmm. I love getting to work with her. I know her name from your last show. Yeah, and <laughs> she's uh, so good that, like, I just can't wait. I'm excited. That's we do great. a cool duet. Love yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
We're getting a lot of Charlie questions. Of course. Everyone's doing hashtag TV time, I've, just so you know. I feel it. Um, great yeah. So when you're, how do you get in touch with your inner child when you are playing a child on stage? I think this is like I'm, I'm channeling John Rubenstein by, by saying this, but I, <laughs> you're always, I know, right? Mm-hmm. You're always in your inner child on stage. Like that's always the case. You're playing. Yeah, you're playing. You have to, no matter how serious the thing is, no matter how dark the role is, mm-hmm. you know there's an audience, you know we're not really mad at each other, whatever it is, and so you just go, let's play pretend and let's do it. Mm-hmm. So I think it's kind of an obvious transition because you just are already in that headspace. Mm-hmm. In terms of playing children themselves, mm-hmm. That's super fun because, um, you know, they have, it's like playing any character. They have their own mannerisms. They have their own eccentricities. and Especially in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Totally. It was, it was so outlandish. And I said this last time, but I mean, certainly he was modeled a lot after my own kid. Because <laughs> luckily my kid's not a brat, but he's in that phase where he's too cool for everything. And yeah. he's on all the electronics and knows he's all the cool stuff. He's a preteen now. He's a t- yeah, you were the 10-year-olds are like, I'm a preteen. And you're like, that's okay, you're 10, calm down. <laughs> Yeah. Relax. Preteen is 12, and that's Thank it. Thank you. I thought it was right? just... I thought it was just 12. Like We're all preteen to... until you turn 13. <laughs> so just everyone needs to relax. Is my 8-year-old niece, niece a preteen? According Maybe. to her, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if she could talk. Does yeah. he like music? Does he have, like... Um, yeah. Is he into pop music? Yeah, he loves it. He loves it all. Besides he loves Hamilton. He actually... This is really sweet, but for my birthday, which was a few days ago. Happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday. You. He just gave me... Um, I have a record player that I'm really into, and so he, he bought me, with his own money, oh. a Beastie Boys record. <laughs> Wow, throwback. <laughs> He's like, I listen to it in the car all the time. It's great. Like, he, like, <laughs> he loves it. Like, Hunter, don't watch this. Okay. You don't need to see this. It's He's okay. like, he'll say, that's not how I talk. <laughs> like, yeah, uh-huh. cool. <laughs> Like the exact that is cool, sound. though. Yeah, it was really. I mean, cool. If he's gonna get into music, he may as well get into something you probably he's got like great when you're younger. Taste. I mean, he's got great taste in music. Yeah. That's what we need. We need his playlist. Absolutely. That's what we need. Hunter's playlist. Oh, I like <laughs> this idea. one. Oh, okay. Wait. Oh, she's got a this can be our last question, but I like this one. Okay. Um, so, if you could choose a father-son duo on Broadway to play for you and your son to play one day. What if would he would you get in front of an be? audience. That's what I was going to say. I'm like, that sounds kind of stressful. <laughs> like, I'll tell you this much. I know, I mean, I my father's an actor mm-hmm. um, locally back home in the Berkshires where I grew up, and we used to do a lot of plays together. What were some of the things you did? We did, um, the first thing I remember doing was Grease. He was Vince Fontaine. I was Johnny Casino, and I played drums <laughs> in the pit. Um, we, did, we did an unknown uh, original musical called Isabella where he played my father. We did a, a couple things like that, some Shakespeare's, and um, it's tough, yeah. especially when you're a teen teen. Mm. It's not oh, yeah. really the most fun. You're like, Dad, I'm going to go out with the cast. And he's like, no, no you get in the car. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the truth was, that said, it was actually so beautiful, too. I mean, it's really cool to work with your parents. And I do kind of selfishly wish he would get a little bit more into it so we could do that. Father, son, There's just talent all around you. Yeah. yeah right? Your family, your girlfriend, mm-hmm. everybody, mm-hmm. your son. Yep. Yeah. I don't feel worthy of sitting next We're to Mike Martell. Oh, please. <laughs> we are all worthy. One. No, I mean, you really just, we you all can are. just harmonize no. with anyone in your life, can't you? If I want, yeah. <laughs> I, that tends to be a qualification. Like, you can be around, you got to <laughs> harmonize. No, exactly. No. I love uh, it. I will say, though, to answer that officially, yes. I think one day in a revival, it'd be really cute to do like like a Constable Joe Hugo with, oh. with Hunter. And I was like, Constable Joe. That'd love be, it. That'd, that'd be, be so cute. That'd be amazing. Yeah. He'll be like, 30 by then. So we'll, <laughs> but he'll be like me. He'll be like a 30 year old playing your time. a kid. <laughs> Take your time. It'll be fine. We'll work up to it. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, All right, yeah. Mike, let's remind people when your show is. Remind me when my show is. No, July uh, 24th. I'm kidding. <laughs> July 24th, Tuesday coming up, 9 30 uh, at 54 Below. There's still a couple tickets available, so you should jump on that. But and your album's coming out this fall, is that right? Yeah, we don't have an official date yet, but it should be kind of in the middle of the fall. You can go to your website and find out. There you go. Or just follow him on yeah, all I'm the on social all the media. Things. He's he's such a delight. <laughs> on, on Instagram, you can, he'll, he'll serenade you on Instagram. <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> I just get bored. Hot. That's what happens. <laughs> Here we go. Tonight's serenade. Oh, well, thank you for coming in, Mike. Of course. Thank you. Always. Caitlin, take us out for the week. Oh, oh, for the week, yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every day on Facebook, but not on Fridays during the summer. Uh, you can listen to all previous Live at 5 episodes by going to wherever you listen to podcasts, searching for hashtag Live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button so you can listen to all of our lovely guests talk about their incredible work. Uh, be sure to tune in on Monday, not tomorrow, when we talk to Renee Taylor from My Life on a Diet.